This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Okay, today we have a Kyrak Blue unit. Now this is one of the glycol prep tables and it is not working. So this one is one where the condensing unit down here cools a flat plate heat exchanger that is on the other side of that. The refrigerant stays within the condenser and the flat plate heat exchanger, which is on just on the other side of that partition right there. And it circulates glycol throughout the unit. Um, so the problem here is, is that we're obviously high in temp. So we got to figure that one out. So down here is the base section. And this is just a fan motor, essentially just a heat exchanger that the cooled glycol passes through. So there's no refrigerant whatsoever in the base section or up here in the top. It's just chilled glycol that runs through there. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the troubleshooting steps and see what we can figure out. This is a basic pump down system, whereas the temperature controller controls a relay module inside that box right there. And the relay module turns this solenoid valve on and off, which starts and stops the flow of refrigerant. And this low pressure control turns the compressor on and off. So sequence of operation, temperature controller says it's hot, opens this solenoid valve right here, suction pressure goes up, compressor turns on, cools the box down or cools the, the, the glycol down, and then it just recirculates over and over and over again. Now there is a pump on the back that circulates the glycol through the top and through the bottom that runs 24-7. Um, so we're gonna start with this condensing unit right here and see if this solenoid valve is energized and go from there. The solenoid valve is hot, meaning that it's more than likely energized. Um, and with that being said, I'm gonna use some vital signs here and I'm gonna need to go ahead and put my suction port on here and test to see if we have refrigerant pressure because, or we can even test the low pressure control first. But just from looking at it, I bet you this solenoid valve is energized. We can even take a, uh, yeah, the, the coil is magnetized. This is sticking to it. So this, well, whether or not it has the correct voltage, I don't know, but this solenoid coil is definitely energized. So the refrigerant flow should be turning on this low pressure control. I've said this many times, and I'm gonna say it again. Cutting boards are sanitary surfaces. I typically don't like to put my tools nor anything on top of the cutting boards. Uh, I prefer to move the cutting boards. If I need to set my tools, then I set them on top of the stainless. Uh, but the cutting boards, I don't like to set any of my tools on. So I'm gonna remove that cutting board so that way I have a surface to set my stuff. All right, I've got my meter set up. Um, this is the new Fieldpiece SC480. It's a pretty nice meter. Um, the one thing I will say, the SC480 doesn't have a place for the leads to clip into, but this is their smaller line, so I understand that. But it has all the cool features. It has phase rotation, which is huge for me, capacitance. Uh, it has watts, which are power, uh, which you can uh, figure out a whole bunch of things within uh, the Fieldpiece app. So pretty cool meter so far. All right, we're gonna open up the uh, low pressure control. And we have an open low pressure control so we have an open switch meaning that this senses no pressure within the system so we do need to gauge up on this and figure out what's going on i am probed up i'm using the Sporlin smart pro r sensors today we've got no refrigerant pressure whatsoever in the system so it looks like we're going to have a major refrigerant leak within the system now there's some very common places that these units leak at the expansion valve power head the suction line uh, service valve are the number one place. So we're gonna investigate that a little bit further and figure this one out. After some investigation, I figured out that someone has uh, replaced this compressor and cut out the suction line service valve. There's not one there back there at all, so it's just straight pipe. So we're gonna jump on this uh, expansion valve. Uh, and this looks like an OEM expansion valve. It's a, a Emerson or an Alco valve. It's never been changed before. Um, so I'm gonna pull the uh, the insulation and then we're gonna have to bump this thing up with some refrigerant to uh, be able to find the leak and I'll go pick up my leak detector too. I was able to pull the insulation jacket off the expansion valve and you know if you use your senses, uh, you can check this, I don't feel any remnants of oil and the TXV itself actually doesn't look too bad back there. So I don't know if the leak's gonna be there or not. It doesn't feel like it. 
typically you should find an oil problem somewhere. Um, I definitely see some remnants of oil on the king valve, on the receiver. But again, at this point, we're gonna need to pressurize this guy up and uh, do an electronic leak search. And what I did was I went to the low pressure control and pulled one lead off and taped it up so I can energize the unit safely. Uh, once I put refrigerant in the system, I don't want the compressor to turn on. Uh, so I can energize the system now. There's no fear of the compressor actually turning on. And what we're actually gonna do is put a tracer of R404A in here and then bump it up with nitrogen to try to find the leak. So we're gonna do that right now. All right, I think I can hear the leak. It's kind of hard because this kitchen is loud, but I think it's in the low pressure control possibly. The leak detector is going crazy. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray. I gotta turn it off because I'm gonna spray this thing, but I'll spray some uh, big blue inside this pressure control. And let's see if we can see it. Yeah. All right, so it's leaking inside the low pressure control. And it's going crazy. So that's why I thought I could hear it. Okay, um, so I need to go out to my van and see if I have a low pressure control and a liquid line dryer and sight glass. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, changed the uh, low pressure control, installed the new sight glass combo. I went ahead and also the old low pressure control was using like this lamp cable. I ripped all that out and went with SJSO cord. Um, it's all back in there. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see, but that way it looks better. And uh, we're getting started on the initial vacuum. So I had the vacuum thing on there wrong, but anyways, once I get down to about 1,500-ish microns, I'll go ahead and close the ballast. Right now I'm pulling just through one side. I don't know if I'm gonna need to pull from both sides. We'll see. All right, so this unit has a funky charge and we may end up going over the charge because it didn't originally have a sight glass, but we're gonna start with the factory charge which is 34.08 ounces. So we're just gonna shoot for 34 ounces and then see where that gets us. But we are gonna clear the sight glass either way. Um, so we're zeroed out and I already purged up to here. Open this bad boy up. And let's see what we can do. We're charging into the high side. I shut the system off so it won't turn on. Basically we're adding as much gas as the system will take into the receiver, which is where we're going. Um, it's being stopped by the solenoid valve because it's de-energized and then once it does that then we'll uh, start it up and see where the sight glass is at. So it looks like we're coming right up on it. We're looking for 34 ounces. It's 34.8. Alright, we're going to stop right there and see where that is. Uh, give it a couple seconds and then we'll flip the power switch and we should come on via low pressure. Alright, let's turn it on. Cut in about 20 PSI on the low side. Take a look at that sight glass. We're going to let it run for a bit and see if the sight glass stays clear. And if so, we'll leave it at B. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because this system originally wasn't designed with the sight glass, so we have to make up for that extra volume of space. Um, but it may be fine, but we put in the factory charge and we'll see what happens. So far, so good. The system is operating. Uh, suction pressure. It is under a heavy load, but this unit also, because it's glycol, it takes forever to come down to temp. The plus side on these units is, is they, once you get the glycol down to temperature, it takes a long time for it to come up in temp, but, and vice versa, it takes a long time for it to bring it down to temp. So, um, but we're looking good so far. We'll look to see if we start noticing a temperature drop on the evaporator temperature um, and the box temp and all that good stuff, so. All right, so this is the back side of the cooler. Here's my little circulator pump. It's a tiny little glycol pump. We have a reservoir that, keep in mind, that reservoir level is very high right now. The glycol is actually gonna contract once it starts cooling. So that level should drop once it's down to temp. Um, but yeah, condenser looks really cl fairly clean. It did have a filter media on it that was really dirty, so I pulled that filter media off. 
but my flat plate heat exchanger is back inside here it's insulated really well and the refrigeration lines essentially just come in and out of that heat exchanger and that's it so the refrigerant stays in the condensing unit and in that heat exchanger and then the glycol comes out the other side of the heat exchanger pumps into the box and then comes down or all the way through the rails up here all the way through those and then comes back down and just just recirculates over and over and over again so we're looking good i'm going to tell the customer to keep an eye on it it like i said it's going to be at least like an hour or two before this thing actually comes down to temperature but i'm pretty confident they're going to be okay all right, this one wasn't too bad. It was a pretty straightforward service call. When I arrived, the unit was high in temp like the customer complained about. Found that the unit was actually low on refrigerant. Went through some diagnostic steps to diagnose before I put my service gauges on the system. This is a critically charged system, so you want to be cautious about that. Um, found a refrigerant leak in the low pressure control, ironically, right? The low pressure control is there to protect the compressor, and that's actually where the source of the leak was. Go figure. But anyways, I went ahead and replaced the low pressure control and kind of fixed a few things on the unit, such as the power uh, cable going to the low pressure control. It was some sort of lamp cable, didn't really care for it. So I ended up using SO cord and uh, went ahead and put a new filter dryer, slight, or s filter dryer slash sight glass combo on the unit, uh, vacuumed it down and recharged. Uh, the customer's been happy for about three weeks now, two weeks now, something like that. So all was well, really nothing too difficult. I wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video all the way to the end. I really, really do appreciate you guys for that. Please leave me some feedback down in the uh, YouTube comments. Send me an email. Let me know what you think. Your guys' feedback and support really helps me, okay? On a side note too, we have a new way to potentially support the channel if you choose to do so. There is uh, truetechtools.com affiliate links in the show notes of this video. So the tools that I talk about in the show notes, if you click on my affiliate links, I get a small commission. You can also use the offer code big picture, one word, and it'll get you 8% off your purchase at True Tech Tools. So just another way, uh, other methods of support, you can support via Patreon, you can support via YouTube channel memberships, um, PayPal donations. But again, nothing is expected, it's just appreciated, okay? I'm gonna continue to make these regardless, okay? Um, remember that I do live streams Monday evening, 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, work permitting, of course, where I discuss these and talk about the problems that I ran into and answer your guys' email questions and YouTube comment questions. So hopefully we'll see you guys over there, okay?